Hey, it's Mr. Blue. Yeah, it's Aaron S. Too. Wow, we're having trouble with this vid. It finally worked that time. I was just thinking, when's it going to happen? You're like, am All I right. supposed to click a video? I'm trying not to laugh. Okay, right. okay go. This is a video where we're going to explain the mysteries of Bioshock. And it, Yeah, let's face it. Rapture has far too many. Mm -hmm. Too many to explain in one game. So now... For a whole episode like this, we can tell you all the, the nitty-gritty. Starting with our character, Jack. Jack Ryan. Yes. yes. Did that not blow your mind? Yes. Yes, it did. But basic, basically, your character was born in Rapture. He was the son of Andrew Ryan and Jasmine Stripper. <laughs> A.K.A. Stripper. Yeah. But, uh... She was scared that Andrew Ryan was going to get mad at her for having this baby, so she donated it to a program that this, the scientists were doing. She didn't know that the program was run by Fontaine, Ryan's biggest competitor, and Ryan got mad when he found out. Fontaine... Stabbingly mad. Yes, like... <laughs> killed with a wrench or something like that. Yeah, or something. Mm -hmm. Fontaine uh, basically had all these tests to make it so you're hypnotized... The moment you hear the sentence, would you kindly, so that he would be able to use you and your genes that happen with the, your genes that you share with Andrew Ryan to take over the city. And basically, once they finished with you, they sent you up on a mission to hijack a plane and crash land and come back down to the city. And this whole time, you had no idea that that was your true calling. Mm -hmm. Not until no the idea. very end, pretty much. Basically... All right, now... What was the city made for? Okay, Rapture. That city. Now, when you first go go through the submerge, submerger and you actually see the city, what it was actually originally made for was an idea that I think is really good, is that Ryan wanted to make a city where no one had limits, like in Moscow, where you had the government, like everyone was together. They and you have the United States where you had a government. Then you go to other places where it's all religious. He didn't want that. He wanted a place where everyone who was strong-willed and was smart could be that, could be all they could be without having any limitations at all. Now, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Because when you look at plasmids, for instance, you can kind of see where the insane kind of begins. Mm -hmm. But either way, that was Andrew Ryan's original intent, and I think it's a good intent originally. But it definitely did come much more than uh, what he thought it would become, yeah. especially when Fontaine came in the mix. Yeah, you want me to explain the plasmid business? Yeah, you explain the plasmid. All right, basically Fontaine comes. He's got this whole guy who has this whole separate... He's got the kind of same but also a little separate view of uh, Andrew Ryan that the people who can do things should be doing the things that they can do. And uh, he started all these funding projects and all that, and with his scientists, they discovered a thing called plasmids, which, like, they would inject into themselves, and it would pretty much make life easy. Complete easy. No, Snap yeah. your finger, you light up a room. That was the original idea. Easy life and all that. But, Simple. like every good thing, too much of it is a bad thing. Exactly. Yes, and that's what caused these people to go into the drug-induced rage that they're all in. Mm -hmm. That's basically all the plasmid was. It was basically just a, a very addictive drug. Very powerful drug. Oh, yeah, and no one was able to get off it so easily. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, you want to explain the whole Andrew Ryan Fontaine rivalry? All right, well, the whole Andrew Ryan and Fontaine rivalry was that... Fontaine, now this is a guy who's lived his entire life with different identities. When you first see him, he's actually Atlas. That was an identity that he went with after he told the world that Fontaine was dead, mm -hmm. basically. He even says eventually that he spent like six months as a Chinaman. So he, he can hide better than anyone. That's why I'm expecting he might be in the second game, honestly. Yeah. And his whole view is that he want he took he knows what Ryan has and what he holds for the city, and he basically wants to tear that down. He wants he wants Ryan out of the picture, and he wants the city for himself. Mm -hmm. That's where Ryan comes in the mix. Now Andrew Ryan, a guy who 
to spend his whole life in dreaming the city, finally builds it, gets everything he wanted for it, and now a man, a, a Chicago mobster comes in trying to take everything away from him. And that's basically their rivalry, is that one wants to keep it and the other wants it. Yeah. And basically, like, the whole thing is, um, Andrew Ryan, he, was, he wasn't going to instantly deny people this use of plasmid, because that would no, go against no. everything this city was for that he made. And so he's like, so, all right, we'll, we'll let you guys have it, but we're going to try to regulate it. And when they started regulating it, the, people yeah. started getting deprived, and they were, like, going crazy to try to get some. That was the thing, is that Fontaine knew the rules, but he was able to go between them to kind of scurry the fact. Mm-hmm. He was trying to use so was, Ryan's philosophy against him. So he was still technically legal, I can, you could say. Yeah. So do you want to explain the whole business about the Little Sisters and all that? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll take on that. Yeah, you take all it. All right, the Little Sisters, uh, they were, they could, they, they had, the scientists, they found the plasmids and all that, but they weren't able to really get a lot of it because it's a very rare substance. So they basically thought up a recycling program type thing that would make it so uh, plasmids from people who have died would be reused for new people. So they would they made up they found this sea slug under the in the ocean that was able to locate the plasmids. They did tests and like it was able to see the the plasmids shining even from inside of things. And they did tests and implanted little girls with these sea slugs so that the little girls were able to see the plasmids shining from things. And so I want to, yeah. so they would like go out and find dead bodies and take the plasmids out of them and bring it back to be used for somebody else. So, it was all really just a recycling program, I guess you could say, is that the plasmid was in a person's veins. When they died off, the plasmid was still there, so that's what the Little Sisters were basically for. Yeah, and we basically already explained why the Little, why the little Sisters needed the Big Daddies and everything about the Big Daddies. Basically, just protect They were made to protect because daddies. when the people went even more crazy over the plasmids, they saw the Little Sisters as their first target because they're the ones that carry it. So they had to make something to protect them, and that's when the Big Daddy program came to mm-hmm. fruition. When they when they had to when it came to the point where they had to make these. If they didn't, then their whole idea of recycling plasmid was done. Yeah, basically, uh, Little Sisters. I think they're like immune to like weapons and plasmids and all that. But uh, you can pick them up and actually rip them open to get the stuff out of them. That was the thing, is if you play the story and if you pick up a little sister and you harvest, you actually harvest the slug yeah. that is with inside every It shows morning. you, like, violently shake her or something, and then you, like, pull her down, and it shows, like, a splashing scream with her screaming, and you lift up the slug. Yeah. And when you when you protect them, I guess basically what you're doing is you're kind of... What would you say that is? You're just kind of... Well, uh, Tenenbaum, dis- she figured out all the stuff was going on, and she wanted to fix it, so she made a plasmid... It was able to kill the slug because if you take the slug out of her, you're gonna kill her no matter what. Basically, even if it's, it's like an, taking even a, if, a vital. Organ. Yeah, even if it's like whole scientific surgery type thing, it'll kill her. But Tenenbaum designed a plasmid that made it so by touching the skin and activating the plasmid, you can kill it so it'll be inside of her. It'll pretty much just like dissolve away inside of her, and she'll be better. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we pretty much explained everything. <laughs> Basically, now, I want to say right off the bat right now that my, this is just my theory about the second game. M- mind if I say Go this? Ahead. Like what I think is going to happen? All we right. got about a My whole, th- we got that? about a minute. Alright, my idea. Basically, in a nutshell, the big sister, it's just the decoy. Just think about that. That's basically my idea, is that the big sister is just the decoy. Let's go from there. <laughs> yeah, big sister, decoy. My philosophy, big sister, she's going to be a huge part. She's going to be like the ma- thing that keeps your attention, but then there's going to be something else. Like, I'm, I'm actually hoping that it might be Su Chong. That would, that would actually work because you never, we never saw, you him. never find out what happened to him or anything. And he was a big part of the little sister program. Yeah, so he could have done something already to make this girl like want to come back. And here's another question: Why is she back? Of all reasons, why now? Hmm. I don't know, but we'll have to find out when we get that and probably do a playthrough on it. Definitely, and I wonder who would possibly do that, too. All right, well, we'll see you guys all later. All right, take it easy, guys.